Hi guys, so this is going to be our first NIDA tutorial. Um, I'll be showing you how to make example 1 in NIDA, which is a structural analysis program. So to get started, you want to make a new project. So hit the file and go new. And you want to have kilonewtons as your force unit and meters as your length unit. Now the gravity direction is in the negative y direction. So as you'll see, our global axis this is the y direction positive and y direction negative. So we want to go to analysis options here, analysis and design parameters setting, and to change our active degrees of freedom to the x and y plane only. Now once we've got that all set up, we can start building some nodes. So go to the right hand panel and go add node. So we want one at the zero, so that's the origin. One, another one at the 5 meter mark, so just so we can see deflections and bending moments at that point. And 10, which is another node, 15 and 20. So on the diagram, they'll be here at A, we'll have our 0, at the load is our 5, at B is our pin support, mid span of this B and C member is the 15 meter mark, and at C we have our 20 meter mark. So once we've done that, we can go connect them all up with a member. So make sure you've got snap to node selected and then go add member and don't change any of that and then just click, click, click and click to join it all up and right click to finish. So now you've got your beam and your nodes set up. You want to set up some boundary conditions now. So if you double click a node, it will bring up the node options and you can select fixed, which is all fixed here. And this is what, this translation fixed is the pinned option. So we have a fixed end, so that's done. A pin support and another fixed end. So once that's all done, you'll notice that you can't actually see the boundary conditions because they haven't been displayed yet. So if you head to the top and go show boundary conditions, you'll be able to see them. So now we need to add some loads. So if we select this node here where the 100 kilonewtons is applied, we can go over here to add load and select live load as the load case and joint load as the type of load and then we've got negative 100 acting in the downwards direction. So apply that, and then select this member and this member where the distributed load is applied, and go add load, UDL, uniformly distributed load, and negative 10, and apply that. Now once again you'll notice that the loads are not displayed, so to change that we're going to go to set visibility of loadings. Tick live load, because that's a load case we've applied, and go apply. Now you'll see that everything matches up with the diagram, so we're ready to do some analysis. So if you head to analysis and go set analysis cases, we can go add a linear analysis with a design option and an analysis only option. We only want to analyze it, so select that and go to applied loads, select your load cases live load and go OK, and then you can run it. But you'll need to save it first, so I'm going to name mine example 1. And this should only take a few seconds. So the more complicated your analysis, the longer it's going to take. Now, my deflected shape right here will show up a lot better than yours when it comes up, because I have it scaled up to 20 times. So originally it should be... Oops, that's not right. Zoomed in a bit too much there. So originally it will look like this. So you won't notice much of a deflected shape here, so you can go to the scaling option to increase it. So before I had it at 20, and that looks like this. So if you go to these options here, you can toggle what your analysis results look like. So you can show your undeformed versus your deformed shape. You can show a undeformed shape and just the deformed shape. And you'll notice that it's color-coded based on the stress in the member. So this member is really close to failing. Once it reaches red, it will show that it has failed. So um, if we select our undeformed shape and go to show bending moment and shear force diagram, you'll be able to see 
some options here, and we want our bending moment about the z-axis, and then show values. So if we apply that, you'll notice that you have your bending moment produced. And similarly, if you select a long y-axis for your shear force, it will show that. And it will get a bit messy since you have our loading there, so we can close that by doing the same thing we did to open it. Now finally, you want to be able to show your reactions, so I'm just going to take the shear force diagram off so it doesn't get messy, and also close the show global axis option. So now we've got a plain beam. And if we head to show member, or show nodal displacements and reactions, we can go to all reactions and we want our Y force. So if we apply that, you'll see that you have your reaction forces here. And that's pretty much it for example one. Uh, please leave some feedback so that I can make some better videos next time. And uh, I'll upload a text version of this to the Facebook page so you can follow along without the video. Great, thank you. Bye.